and uh, hello again. Yes, I'm wearing the same shirt. Well, it's barely been two and a half hours, of uh, which I only got to spend one of them actually asleep. Yeah, asleep. I said that. Yeah. Anyway, so this time, yes, I am doing yet another sculpt for a patron. However, this time the patron is not able to be here. I have been given a whole boatload, a shed load of reference material, and I will be making it as best as I can in the manner that he wanted. So, what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this item, and when I do, I am also going to go ahead and, uh, you know, make the various... Pr there's a couple of props I'm going to need to make by myself, just, just straight in general, in order to make this particular model. So, it's going to be a lot of 3D Studio Max time today. Uh, in fact, I also need to go ahead and grab myself a nice good image of an elk skull for part of this. And I guess where'd be the best one? Probably here. Yeah. Or here. Yeah, there we go. View the image. Let's do it the old fashioned way. You're just gonna have that one in a okay, I get it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop us over to uh, the infinite views of 3D Studio Max. And the first thing we're going to be making is the helmet that this guy wants for this character. So it's, it's, it's one part helmet, one part mask, as this would innately become. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to create an elk slash moose skull. We're going to start it off with a sphere. And then bring that up above his head. Now we need to make sure that it's on the X is at zero. And we're going to drop the number of segments to 12, no 16. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the bottom half, and then I'm going to delete the left half. I'm going to work on half of this at a time. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start off, I'm going to change the outline before I change anything else of this skull and then everything else will follow along with it okay now I'm going to select this and deselect that I'm going to bring this down a bit Now, the reason I say everything else will follow along is for exactly that reason. Everything else will follow along. After I get this basic shape in, and I've gotten it to where I need it to be, then I will be taking it into ZBrush for final shaping. The antlers will be done completely separately. Okay, bring this down, bring this down a lot. Uh, 
Okay, now, it's not going to look quite right. But that's because this is just going to be a very crude approximation. And click that. Bring it out. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and mirror it. Copy. It is not in the correct shape yet. So that's part of what bringing it into ZBrush is for. And, oh, I forgot to attach this one. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shrink it like that. Then select these edges and weld them together. Okay, now I'm going to reset transform and what I'm seeing to make sure. Okay, so we're going to select all the, all exposed edges and good, it's only the bottom ones because we're going to take care of that. Well, first of all, let's bring it down just a bit more. And actually, we need to bring that up. Yeah. And now we're going to do what's called a shell. And we want it at 0.5. Actually, we want this at 0.25 and inner at 0.25. Collapse all. And then we hit it with mesh smooth one time. Collapse all. We are then going to take this and export it as an object file. Export. Export selected. And we're going to 3D printing home meshes. Free sculpt minis. Patreon minis. New. Wavefront OBJ. Yeah, it's all that just to get to here. Okay. That'll be Shaman Helmet 01. Export. Done. The antlers are going to come after I do the base shape. And hello, Todd. So I think you're on for next Sunday evening. Is that how it's going? Okay. Well, let me go ahead and draw on my little star and hit edit. Then import shaman helmet. I'm going to frame it and then we're going to subdivide it a few times. And what we're going to do first is we're going to hit X. Now you may or may not have been able to see up there, but now there's two vertexes reacting as I move the cursor. That's what we want. Now what we're going to do is we're first going to take move topological. We're going to grab the front center. We're going to grab the front center and pull it out like that. Even as we grab the sides and pull them out. And what this is for this is to help create the nasal cavity. Let's put a grab in here and pull back. Yeah. Then we're going to grab, make it smaller. Grab back. Oh. You want to grab back. Uh, 
and there we go and what's going to happen is we're going to use this and smooth it out a bit and by doing this smoothing what we're doing is we're helping to make it easier to print later we're going to be dynameshing frame now let's make the mouse a bit larger we're going to go to regular move instead of move topological because we want it to affect the inside as well we're going to kind of bring in some of our shapes and just play around with the shapes just for the sole purpose of making them more organic looking we're also going to smooth out parts of it and grab and drag grab and drag in this case we're making the area that the antlers are going to be and the eye sockets Now that's just some basics. It's looking kind of buggy right now. And by that I don't mean flawed. I mean it's looking like a bug. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dynamesh it at 256. And then I'm going to break out the mat the tablet and one thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab the bottom here, we're going to drag them down. Once again, we're trying to break this plane to make it look less artificial. I mean, we can eventually show it to be organic, but it's a lot easier when the bottom of this is a bit more erratic. Now, I'm going to use inflate ever so lightly on the ends here just to make them thicker and easier to print when it comes time. I'm then going to use polish. Where's polish? Polish. And Z sub and shrink down the mouse and do this to kind of flatten out the top then slash no let's use orb standard or orb, orb cracks so that's once again we go back up here to my C drive program files uh, Pixelogic and ZBrush 2018 ZBrushes Orb Orb Crack and shrink it just a little and I'm going to use that to draw on well, let's get stroke open and let's increase the lazy mouse because it has a problem with lazy mouse and I'm going to kind of draw it from back here And then one, two. That helps with the shape. Now I'm going to go ahead and glance at this image I've got here of a uh, pseudo real skull, and we can see that I need to make the cheekbones whiter, and the whole thing needs to be whiter. So I'm going to view from the top, expand the mouse a lot, and go back to that move brush, grab it here and drag it out grab it here and drag it out and I'm going to go from be below and do the same thing frame zoom in now I'm going to use the standard brush Draw that brush size down a bit, bring that intensity up quite a bit, and go for sub. 
and I'm going to use it to make way too big to make or the eyes first of all I need to kind of dig in here to make this a lot smaller Just a little bit of smoothing to kind of make it a bit more natural and then where the eyes would be and now what I need to do I'm going to use the trim curve uh, circle trim curve Contr shrink this down control shift and draw on okay no that's not what's supposed to happen all right how about trim circle Okay, I know what I gotta do. I have to demonstrate something that's not been done before by me in this show. I'm going to use what's called Dynamesh Subtraction. Let's make this Dynamesh to 512. Dynamesh. Ah, I see what happened there. Okay, let's undo that. Now let's smooth that whole area. And then we're going to go down here to where it says Display Properties. And we're going to turn on Double Sided. Okay, we can see it's not po poking through. So we're going to go back up to Geometry and Dynamesh 512 after subdividing a couple times. Then we're going to smooth this out. Now we're going to do a subtool of Append and we're going to append a cylinder. Ah, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, because it's it's huge we're going to deformation rotate Z 90 excellent now we're going to size and scale it down and we're going to undo the Y scaling oh no we are going to redo the Y scaling it's going to we're going to undo the X scaling shrink that a little bit more okay there we have gonna leave it dynameshed we're now going up here that little circle is changed doesn't look like a lot we're going to groups polygroups Group as Dynamesh Sub, right here. Now when I go up to the Sub tool, I go to Shaman Helmet, I go to Merge Down, and then I draw. 
and the end result the hole in the mask for where the eyes are. And I can go ahead and smooth this out. Okay, now we're going to dynamesh it one more time. And smooth it out. And dynamesh it again. And smooth it out. Then we're going to start using the move tool to just kind of shape the... Uh, the uh, eye socket to fit what we've done to the outside of it. And now we have our basic skull sh skull shaped helmet. The thing is I think it's a little thin for 3D mo for the 3D printing miniature, I'm going to inflate it just a bit. I think that would be thick enough while it's still retaining most of the t of the uh, uh, detailing. Now I'm going to go ahead and export this back out. Well, first, no, I'm not. I'm going to subdivide it one more time. Delete lower. And then I'm going to decimate it. No, I'm not going to decimate it. This does not want to be decimated. This wants instead Z remesher. This lets us have a bit more cohesive geometry. And Z remesher, instead of reducing by triangles, reduces to quads and edge loops which can lose a lot of detail at times but it becomes easier to reshape and do things like that too this is just a basic shape we're going to go back in and refine it when it comes time and now 14,000 yeah I mean you can see now what I mean by edge loops it's formed loops around the eyes and around that nostril area and you, know, you can even see it so I'm gonna go ahead and export this back out uh, let's take this back up to miniatures patreon minis new shaman helmet one yes now I'm going to load this back in here. Well, file import and 3D printing home meshes resculpt minis Patreon minis new summon helmet of one import as a single mesh. Now the reason why we did that is because there are a few segments that didn't mesh together well and we just got rid of them. Okay. Now it's still one single solid mesh thankfully and what we're going to do with it is we're going to go ahead we're going to move its center its pivot center to be closer to the ear of this human type figure and then we're going to rotate it down to where the figure is looking through the eyes of the skull We're going to be tweaking it further, but that's a pretty good spot to put it. 
Let's go ahead and change its color just to make it something a little bit easier to uh, see and a little bit less unnatural. And now the next thing that we're going to be doing is antlers. Now these are actual moose antlers, but the difference between moose and elk is very small. Uh, the elk tend not to have as many flat sections on their antlers, for example, but we're going to kind of make a kind of a hybrid simply because, well, it, it kind of works better that way. And hello, Corsiger Spawned. And is, is Corsiger Spawned about the, the correct way to phrase your, to pronounce your name? Well, what we're getting ready to do here is we're getting ready to make the antlers for this helmet. And I'm going to start it off with a box. And this box is going to be right over here. Kind of thick, but... When I look at this uh, picture, I can see, you know, if I use this box and I rotate it at an angle, I then have two or three coming off the front. Let's say two off the front, three off the back, and then the back third coming back for this final portion. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Three by three, yeah, that'll, that'll do it. Three by three. Actually, four. Poly. And then I'm going to rotate this just a little bit. Actually, no, let's not rotate it yet. Let's go ahead and do our extrusions first. Oh, and before I do my extrusion, let's pull this in. Actually, let's go ahead and start off with a relaxation. And push. There we go. And then delete them over here. And we have several points about ready to explode out. And we're going to change this to pull it back in. Then we're going to select these, deselect, extrude out, and it's going to come down here and rotate. And then here I'm going to select and connect them. Excellent. And then actually let me deselect that. And it connects out. Okay. Then we're going to take these vertexes and drag them out this way. And what we're doing is we're making room for that portion that hang out came out from under here. Then we're going to select that and we hit ring. It selects everything that's in a ring from there. We're going to connect it. We're going to select polygon. We're going to deselect that one and we're going to extrude just a short distance. Okay. Now we're going to rotate this whole thing this way. 
Now, the next thing to do is we're going to select <coughs> these six vertexes and make them the same width as the rest of this. Now, as much as it looks like this is just kind of a randomness and almost cartoony, I'm going to now mesh smooth it. Actually, it gives us one last thing to do. We need to go ahead and... Actually, let's go to this one. And we're going to select extrude it. Oh, wait. Cancel. Select this. Deselect that. Extrude at 0.1 millimeter. And again. There. Now we mesh smooth it. And we've got... It looks a lot more like an antler now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and collapse it. And I'm going to export it. Export selected. And we uh, view list. Sort by date modified. This is going to be Shaman Antler 01. Export. Done. Delete. And ah, there you are, Gorgers Fond. Now I'm going to take this back into ZBrush. This time I import the antler frame and I hit X because I don't need any kind of. And we have our basic antler shape here. We're going to subdivide it quite a bit. Delete lower. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to use inflate. Bring it up a lot larger and we're going to start inflating on the base of the antler here. Because we want it to be a little bit thicker than where it is here because this is where it's going to be at its thickest in real life in the nature on a typical moose or elk bull. I'm going to shrink it down. And I'm going to go ahead and once again erratically inflate along some of these lines. Um, come along this way. Almost like it was a dragon's uh, wing in some ways. Okay, now we're going to zoom, close in. We're going to pull with the move tool on some of these shapes. And it's becoming more and more natural just looking at it. Now, the next thing that we got to worry about is that this has to curve. So what we're going to do is, while it's at this angle, we're going up here to deformation. And we're going to bend it. No, that's not the good bending side. Nope. So we try a Y bend. No. What about an X bend? No. Well, we're not going to bend it. Not in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this huge, this mouse huge. And the first thing I'm going to do is grab and kind of pull up a bit. Thank you! 
and then come up from the top and grab and pull back a bit. Then I'm going to shrink the mouse overall just to make it a little bit more erratic and natural. I think that's pretty good for now. Any further details we can go ahead and sculpt on in the final version. So what we do now is we go back to geometry. <coughs> Excuse me. And we see remesh. Sorry, once again for hitting the uh, microphone. And this is going to go from 96,000 polygons. To five to six thousand basically. Fifty nine hundred. With very little change in appearance. Now one thing we are gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and smooth that area. Okay. Now we're gonna export it back out. Shaman Outler one. Yes, we wanna replace it. And we're going back to three studio max. File, import. Shaman Antler 1. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to shrink it a bit. But first we're going to affect the pivot and move it kind of to about here. Then we're going to shrink it. Then we're going to move it again, but this time we're going to move it to an X of zero. The reason for this is we're about to mirror it. And this button right here says mirror. We're going to copy. And we're, going to we're not going to attach anything because what we have to do now is we have to reset selected. And if you notice down here, it suddenly turned black. Uh, the reason for that, I may have mentioned, is the normals, the direction that the light bounces off. I'm going to attack this. I'm going to rotate and move to where they're in position over the proper part of the helmet. Skull. And actually, we need to come, kind of come back this way a little and what we're going to do is I am going to select this vertex right there and that's equivalent to that selects two of them actually that's too low we want it to be up here and that would put it as this vertex which means yes I have two vertexes selected I am then going to use soft selection, edge selection of flare, lots of it, and fall off. We're going to shrink it down quite a bit. Then lock the soft selection and shrink until, yep, they are now poking through the helmet. It's now part of the helmet. We unlock soft selection and turn off soft selection. And hit Z. And we have our shamanic moose like. Actually, we need to do one other thing. Dag nabbit. And we need to move that pivot. About there, because what we have to do now is we need to rotate it a little bit. Mm. 
Okay, there we go. Now, we affect the pivot and put it back at an X of zero. And once again, mirror it. Reset, reset selected and normals. Collapse all. Now we're going to select this helmet, Let's zoom in, make it all that yellow color just for the sake of having it be a yellow color. And this is what the helmet is going to be for what we're getting ready to make. That is not the only thing we're making. And that took us, holy cow, that took us almost 45 minutes to make just that helmet. So, file, export, selected. Some things do take longer than others. Shamanic helmet. Yes, export. Done. Now, the next thing should be a lot easier. It is an incense sensor. And what that is, it's just basically a fancy thing to hold incense in. We're going to put it here. And all that's going to happen is I'm going to refine this shape into something that kind of looks like some of the things that they used to use in the Middle Ages to hold incense. Now we start off by taking this, shrink it, make it taller, and bring it down just a little. Then we take this, and we're actually going to shrink it just a bit. Then, we're going to select both of these, and this, and that loop, chamfer. And what this is going to do, this is going to tighten those edge loops. Okay. Now what's going to happen is, the areas that I did not sharpen are going to turn into curves. And this is our sensor. We are going to reduce this by one. Collapse all. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make holes along the top. No, better yet, along the side. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect in segments of two. There. Now I'm going to inset by point zero one. extrude by negative point zero one and then by negative quite a bit bring those in and then negative point zero one and inset by point zero one now I hit mesh smooth again And what we have is our basic shape with some moderately square holes. Oh well. And then we're going to take a ring, aka a torus. I'm just going to give it a little bit of space. Let's make that radius a little bit larger. No, let's make it a little bit smaller. And then drop it down deeper into the device. In fact, let's drop both of these down. Now, just to make things a lot easier to maneuver, let's move this to 13 e negative 13 even, and this in the Y to 0. We can fix that when we're done. Okay, now, 
the next thing is to make a chain from this to a like a little handle ring so we're going to drop this down quite a bit again almost to the ground we're going to make a handle ring which is another torus that should be good and then in yeah okay now it looks pretty good next thing we're going to do let's go ahead and move this on the X to tw 13 and then we're going to come here oh come on there we go we're going to make a box that's roughly square that's centered right here bring it up we're going to start here And it's a 1.1 for both width and height. It's Y is 0, and it's a negative 13. And then its height is going to be enough to reach there. Well, it's got, we've got to bring this down. And let's bring the length and width down because it's height we're going to have to worry about because what's going to happen is this is going to become our chain yes the box is going to become our chain so we start making height segments that should be good and the way we're going to do this edible poly we're going to start off by selecting one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to extrude not that far, but about that far. Then we're going to select these three, and we're going to extrude and accept. The result is it'll end up looking like a small chain, but one thing we've got to add, every other unit, we've got to connect with two segments at 90, 98. And then when we hit Mesh Smooth, okay, I see a problem. Yeah. One thing we need to do is when you go ahead and select these, 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 and these, and then connect those. And then with Alt, we, uh, deselect those closer to the center and control backspace there now you mesh smooth so if I go in here select these and make them even shorter and then select these and these because we want to make them look like they're actually poking through the holes there as far as anyone can tell this chain is a chain and not just you know collapse all make this this up like a pale blue just to make it distinct from the skin this is our incense sensor now one thing we got to do is we got to give it smoke 
So to give it smoke, we got to have something coming off the kind of the back side. But we're going to start it by making it into a torus. Now, first things first, we move it to thir negative 13. Then, we convert it to an edible poly. I'm going to select this. Grow, invert, and delete. Then I'm going to select that one and collapse. I'm going to select that one and collapse. I take this and move it in up here. Then I'm going to take the bottom and move it out like it's coming out of the uh, sensor. I'm going to select this and kind of enlarge it a bit and move it out a bit. Then I'm going to add in a noise. Fractal noise, roughness one, 10 iterations, and I'm just going to start adding in the noise. And then I'm going to hit it with the mesh smooth on top of that. No, that doesn't do quite what we wanted. We're going to end up doing a lot of uh, puffy, cloudy sculpting on this, I can tell you that. Collapse all. But the end result is we have our little incense sensor. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead, we're going to select the that edible poly and then we're going to attach chain the other torus sensor and then we're going to move this to where it would be held at 90 degrees and then 45 Actually, it'd be held almost this first, so then we're going to move it, yeah, right here. And this is going to be our incense sensor for our shaman. File, export selected, shaman sensor, export done <laughs> it's going to be a very very unusual shaman let's bring him in here we're going to file import shamanic helmet file import shaman sensor now I'm going to select the head so I can parent the helmet to the head. Then I'm going to select the palm of the right hand, parent the sensor to the right hand. It is five minutes till seven, almost an hour in, and I've just finished the new props. This is how long, how much time I save every sculpt by having an, a library of pre-made parts. It's a lot of time I save. Now, the next thing we're going to add, he is going to have the, the robe bottom. So, we add the robe skirt. He does not quite have a cloak, per se. He does, however, have a staff. Um, I'm actually going to... Yeah, let's give him the left-hand staff because he's got the right hand. What happened here? Ah, 
view back. And let's move this to about here. Okay. Now we're going to add, give him a right-handed weapon, but only to shape the fingers. We're going to take that right-handed weapon right away. We can now move the uh, sensor up a bit and perspective yeah we're gonna move them move it forward and up there okay now now we have the pose I'm going to leave the staff and the sensor but I'm going to hide the helmet and the robe and uh, I, I fully understand Kim sometimes most uh, shamans don't really use this kind of uh, sensor but he actually gave me a, a, a pose to use. Just a basic stand there with one arm out and holding on. It's going to be kind of creepy. So, first thing we do is looking at that pose, his right foot is out a little bit more, which usually means that his hip is cocked to the left. So, we take this, we go to parameters, we side to side that way. We then bring this leg down. And we twist the side just a little bit. Then we go to front view. We zoom out just to make sure that the feet are relatively even. And what we're going to do is we're going to bend this foot up and this foot down. Now when we go to the right view, you can see that this foot needs to side to side a little and bend a little bit. Left foot needs to side to side just a little bit there perspective view and then we're going to take the torso and we're going to tilt it the other way we're going to twist it just a little bit but we're not going to bend it we're then going to twist the shoulder a little and raise it just a little we're going to twist I'm going to bend at the elbow. Actually, we need to drop this down instead of this. And then a little bit of twist to get it a little bit more because people tend to plant their their staves at their feet and then we're going to Z translate to get this let me go ahead and control D to get him up on the ground Z-translate it until it's just barely into the ground. There we go. And now we're going to drop this shoulder. Then we're going to bring it forward. We're going to bend it, bend the arm down. 
bend the forearm, twist it, and bend the hand. And twist it just a little bit that way. And now that we're in this, I can see that I kind of need to grab here and kind of pull it like that. We're going to do a lot of sculpting on that hand because that's kind of creepy. I'm going to select that thumb. Unbend. Unside. Yeah, that's better. And then we, let's go ahead and make the helmet visible just so we can make the head creepier. I'm going to bend it down side to side and twist. Okay. And this is the basic shape for our shaman. Actually, I think it would probably be better instead of a staff in his hand, making it a spear and have the guard become the, sta the, the staff. It'd be more shamanic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wizard staff and copy selected items. Now, content library. Let's make it a great spear. And there we go. Now that's too violent. Bum, 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 bum. Where did I put it? I have it in here somewhere. Ah, spear simple. Okay, there we go. Now that is the basic shape that we're going to have. So we're going to start off, we're going to hide the helmet, the sensor, the spear, and the row bottom. We now have less than an hour to go for tonight's show. Oh, it'll be over at late. Oh well. File, export. Shaman body 01. Accept. Why did I end up add on that 01? I don't know. Hide it. Helmet. File, export. Shaman helmet. Accept. Hide the helmet. Make the sensor and the spear visible. File. Export. Shaman props. Accept. Now make the robe visible. File. Export. Shaman robe. Except, and now the last thing we're going to do, because I forgot to do it, let's go ahead and load him in. File, import, bases, base grassy, except. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the sucker, we're going to lower it down. And we want it to be low enough that it looks like he's standing in the grass. We also need to make sure that he's got space on his base. The actual s figure is often not quite centered on his base. So we're going to put it there. Yeah. Let's hide it and hide the robe. We're going to call it File Export Shaman Base. Accept. Okay. And yeah, it's a little random, but when you really look at it from above, it does look kind of grassy. 
which is better than looking gassy. Yes, there are a lot of props that I have on here that are not in the basic uh, files that I sent. For example, I don't think that some of the uh, like is the harp in your in the, in the list. I don't remember the, if if it's in the files that I I made available. I made a lot just for myself, just because the more props you have, the better, and the more that have your touch that looks like something you make, the better. Yeah, that was a burp. So I'm going to go ahead, pop into ZBrush, and we're now going to document new document. The reason we're doing a new document is to reset all these positions and all that. And so we're going to go ahead, PolyMesh 3D, draw in our star, edit, frame, zoom out just a little, and now we import Shaman Body. And now we need our subtools. We need to append. Append. The next one will be the robe. Because the robe is going to end up being fused to the rest of it first. Then we're going to append the helmet. Then we're going to append the props. Then we're going to append the base. And we're going to hide the base and the props and the helmet. Because what we need to do first, we need to make that robe part of it. We need to get his clothing down before we do his... You need his clothing before you can do his accessories. It's just common sense. Yes, indeed. Now, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to subdivide him to about there. Then we're going to go to his skirt and we're going to subdivide to about there. And then I'm going to merge down. Now I'm going to Dynamesh 768. Ah, Dynamesh 768. It would help if I didn't turn off NumLock. Yeah, there we go. And then shrink the mouse. And smooth where it meets the belly. I'll be honest, I will probably, you know, the, the technique I used this morning for the scales on the armor of the, uh, I'm an idiot. I forgot something. I forgot. Oh. To move topological to get the robe above the feet to make the feet actually look like they're coming out from under the robe. Yeah. Isn't that great? frame. Now, Dynamite 768. Oh, before I do that, I've got to blend in the, the surfaces of the... Hey, ah, yeah, can you tell I've been awake for a while? Oh, good lord, I've been so awake. It's just like you wouldn't believe. I mean, come on. There's a little bit of smoothing there, and 
grabbing the side. I don't want to mess with the butt, but I gotta mess with the butt. Oh no. Oh no, I gotta mess with the butt. That's never good. Yeah, so we bring it up. And we bring it out. And we go back in and we shrink the mouse. Yes, a shrunken mouse. As small as they get. And you're still shrinking them. What's going on here? I mean, that just don't make sense. So I bring that out. And I bring that in. And now that I've done that, now I hit Blur Zero and Dynamesh. Undo the Dynamesh, zoom in, and with a smaller brush, bling, it blendies. Bling, it blendies. And there we go. Now, that's the basic shape. The next thing we're going to make is not a belt. It's going to be a mantle. Mantles have nothing to do with Mickey Mantle. Most of us are too young to know Mickey Mantle. And if you know Mickey Mantle, you're a fan of a dead sport. I'm sorry for you. Anyway. I don't know about wanting to be Cher. But, you know, people keep telling me Cher and Cher alike. So Sharon, Ozzy Osbourne's wife, and Sharon Osbourne and Cher. Sharon, Cher, alike. I don't think they look alike at all. What are you talking about, Sharon, Cher alike? Okay, what? Well. Uh, yeah, zoom in that vehicle. Yeah. Come around here. What's going to happen is that's eventually going to be part of the mantle. The original concept that he sent me was wearing a full robe and all that, but I don't think that'd be quite as creepy. If he wanted it kind of creepy, kind of like the scary nature priest side of things instead of, Oh, I'm the helpful druid of the trees, and I'm here to heal you, and... Make you feel one with nature like Bob Ross. No, we want this to be the creepy, scary, represents the primal, terrifying nature of, of the woods and the wild. And nature is red in tooth and claw. Don't forget that. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead with this mantle part. We're going to extract it at 0 0.03. And we are going to extract. Accept. <coughs> draw. And then a draw again. And then here, under geometry, <coughs> dynamesh at 128. We are then going to use Move Topological. And we're going to grab this and pull it down. Because what this is, this is the torn bits and pieces of leather that he has just draped around his chest. This isn't necessarily anything We then go ahead and make the mouse a lot bigger. Grab it and drag down. Then make it a lot smaller and in inflate. Hide the body. Actually, let's go back to the topological and pull this down. And we're going to brush auto masking 
we click on back face masks, uh, it doesn't inflate, it doesn't affect the back. Oh. This one isn't the one that needs it. It's inflate that needs back face masking. Yeah, there we go. And now when I click on him, yeah. Now, we're going to go ahead and under geometry, we're going to divide it a couple times. And then delete lower frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a couple notches on it using a new brush, I, I, the Orb Cracks brush. Shrink it. And let's make it. Oh, turn that off. Let's turn off the lazy mouse for one. And for another, let's make it a lot smaller. Increase the intensity. The idea is that it is tears and bits and pieces of damage that it, this thing has taken over the years that he's had it. And then a slash across the back which represents a really bad wound he took once. Yeah, there we go. Nice and raggedy. Raggedy. Now, on the, <coughs> excuse me, on the back to the body. We're actually going to make a just a bigger. We're going to Start off with a basic selection. We're then going to hide everything and then we're going to draw on the rest of the selection. abdomen that he wears as a belt. So we're going to extract this at 0 0.02. Extract. Accept. And then grab. Oh, heck. Alright, uh, that was uh, stupid for me. I accidentally got part of his thumb. So, split masked parts and now I go to that masked part and delete okay so now we're gonna hide this and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the orb crack brush shrink it a bit and we're gonna use it to draw in our uh, basic actually no we gotta dynamesh this first okay now we're gonna make it a little bit large no a little bit smaller yeah and we're gonna increase the intensity yeah now we're gonna draw it from here
just kind of just make it look like wraps just kind of put around the figure and come this one down this way and this one's going to come from here going to come around this way going to come down here and now we're going to shrink it even more and we're going to smooth out some edges to make it look more like one edge is over top of the other And the intent is that it will look like there's multiple pieces of cloth wrapped around, or leather, wrapped around his abdomen. And let's make the body visible. Because, I, mean, I know these, di these dug in past the body. I'm almost dead. Okay. Yes. Okay, I'll frame out and put the and then we're gonna go ahead and put the make the helmet visible just kind of try and make it look just see what we got for the look yeah it's already looking kind of creepy So yeah. Okay, next up what we're going to do, let's go ahead and give him some bracers cuz he needs something on his arms that to make the, to kind of break up the uh monotony of arm 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 arm. Actually no, let's forget that for right now. Let's go ahead let's work on this sensor. And what we're going to do is we're going to Mask the sensor off and split unmasked parts. 
Now we're going to subdivide it a little bit. And now what we need to do is we need to go to polygroups, auto groups. Okay. Excellent. Now the smoke and only the smoke masking inverse okay now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the clay brush with an alpha and this alpha is basically going to help us try to make it look like smoke so import uh, CS tools alpha no that's all scales so we gotta go instead of desktop go back to C program files pixel logic 20 the alphas just kind of, hmm. Well, let's see what we can do just with this with the uh let's make it the clay build up brush. And we're just gonna kind of and then just kind of bring this out and this basically I'm making random trails with this brush then I'm gonna hit it with a polish and I can't get in there with him in the way it's gonna, rep yeah, it's gonna represent the trails of the smoke coming from the sensor So now what I'm going to do is I'm first going to give it a polish under deformation of 5. Then I'm going to geometry and I'm going to dynamesh it of 256. Oh, mask must be cleared to dynamesh. Never mind. All right. One thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've got a better idea. I'm gonna grab that move, make it large, and just kind of start dragging in, stretching piece. No, it looked good like it was. Let's leave it like that. Yeah. I mean, that looks like smoke. The only thing we can might do is grab the tail end of it and kind of. Yeah, there you go. What do you think? Does that smoke look good? Okay. Well, next, let's go ahead and tweak the helmet while we're here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to 
in the geometry we're going to divide it a little bit shrink the mouse and then we're going to use the inflate tool if it will stop doing that and we're going to kind of sketch on a little bit more of a uh, surroundings for the antlers and move topological we're gonna grab parts of the antlers and kinda just kinda drag them to make them a bit more chaotic and more naturalistic down okay now frame honestly I think that that helmet can do is pretty good as it is let's make a little bit larger of a selection and pull oh too big pull them out and up a little bit just to make them a bit hang a, a bit more creepily yeah there we go that's good the next thing is like I said let's go ahead and hide the rest of these sub tools and make his arm or make his uh, bracers Hello Andrew, you caught me at the middle to, middle to the end of a shaman, a creepy shaman. Like I was saying earlier, he doesn't represent nature as in, oh look, puppies and bunnies. His nature is red and tooth and claw and it will kill you. And that's something a lot of people forget. I mean, everyone who plays a druid that I know of either plays it for the game rules effects. You no, know, it's a combat monster when you get the, if you take Circle of the Moon and get in some good combat shapes. But, or they play them as, whoa, dude, man, save the trees, dude. I mean, like, wow. And yes, I do know someone who actually does play a hippy-dippy druid who gets stoned all the time. Yo, oh, man, it's like a gift from the shrooms, dude. They want us to be happy, so they decide to make themselves like, you know, psychedelic and stuff. I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that. Then there's the sociopathic psycho druid DN a DM's gift, also known as Did you light a fire within 15 miles of this forest? Oh my god, you're gonna die! Yeah, uh, fire is needed in a forest. In fact, that's why we're having so many problems in, out in the west right now, on, out in the California and all that, is because we stopped all fires we could meaning that the small fires that would burn away underbrush and leave the big trees alone didn't happen and when they did have fires when they was too big for them to control they were too big for the trees to survive and that's why we're having all this chaos and all these problems with the uh, fires. If you light a campfire in a true nature-loving druid's woods, 
He's just gonna look at you and go, eh, don't forget to put it out. Uh-huh. That's it. He's not gonna go, oh my god, what is it there? That was a bit rough on the throat. Wow, I gotta remember not to do that one again. Know what I mean? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is... Make an X here, and an X here. And those are too small. They won't show up. So we've got to bring this back up. There we go. Yeah, that's good enough. And then we come back this way. Now we're going to one, two, three, and very gently tap over these. Then with a slash. No, with a uh, orb crack. One, two, three, four. We're going to draw the seam between <coughs> There we go. Very basic. And then let's go ahead and we're going to switch back to layer. Hmm, no, nope. that's not what we want to do. I know what we want to do. giving it a bit more detail than I would normally. This is a patron sculpt. The patron is not present. The patron won't see this until tomorrow. Now let's go to masking inverse. Actually, masking blur mask, now inverse. And we're going to inflate it out. Okay. And then with the orb crack, we're going to kind of draw in a little divide here. To represent how it's a layer on top of a layer. Yeah. Then we're going to draw in some actually I'm going to use layer for this. Okay, here we go.
and now we're going to inflate one, two, uh, two, still two. This is some detailing. That's lacing. Yeah, or sewing, stitching. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Now let's frame out. That's that bracer. Now this one, let's go ahead and make it metallic. Because it's the one that's holding the, uh, the incense sensor, you know. Let's go back to that orb cracks, make it bigger, make it slightly deeper. Then, we're going to inflate, increasing that intensity to 30. Here, bring it to here. And then, we're going to Let's hide the body. This is getting annoying. Hide, Mr. Body. So, I'm assuming that most of you are in the U.S. where we called it Clue. Anyone in here ever play the British version where it was called Cluedo? Anyone? Right, and then I'm going to bring this here. It's going to make it all kind of fancy. Now, I'm going to go back to Orb Cracks, and I'm going to draw in a very faint... Actually, no. Let's draw in... Hmm. It's going to, be, it's going to have to be a Slash for this one. Slash and orb cracks act quite differently. And because of that, you got to kind of figure out for yourself which one you want to use for a given situation. Slash tends to sharpen existing divots while at the same time that it creates its own. So a situation like this, orb cracks would actually rough up. It's like a crack, the center of, of, of a slash is sharp, but the outside edges are soft. So, for creating, you know, an initial division, like here is where we would use our orb cracks. And then we'll smooth no, it's still want to do it with a regular. Yeah, no one tool is the be all and end all. Let's go ahead and increase the intensity though. Yeah. What we're doing is this is like little bands connecting the plates. Okay, now let's make him visible. Well, one other thing we're going to add before we do wrinkles, we're actually going to use the orb cracks brush on the pan on the on the uh, actually layer then orb crack here. 
what's going to happen is oh, we need to add and bring this back down to about 80. Make it bigger. Nope, too much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use this to make the seam. That's what I'll do. Yeah, once again. Okay, now... Let's bring this around the foot, because it's not going to include the foot. It shouldn't. Masking inverse. Deformation. And then we're going to inflate it just a little. That's good. And then we're going to smooth where it meets the seam. And then we're okay. Oh. In case you don't know, my whole thing just kind of locked up thanks to a daggum autosave. ZBrush is the worst about autosaves. It will autosave and then use up all of your memory to do the autosave while you're in the middle of doing something. It's horrible. cover this side. Uh... When you hit one, it redoes whatever you just did. Now, there is a stitching alpha, okay? I'm just trying to remember where it is. Well, first, let me pop back here real quick, uh, just to let y'all know. Um, basically what's happening is, uh, I'm sitting here trying to make a seam on the side of this robe. So, anyway, let me go ahead. 
I'm going to see if I can find a good stitching seam. A stitching alpha Z brush. That's a good one. View image. Save the image as. Ender Matran Mini's new. And let's save this. As, yeah. Okay, now. I'm going to go ahead and pop back in. And what we're going to do, we're going to zoom in. We're going to lay him back on his back so that when I turn sideways I can get more of him into the screen at once. There we go. Now we're going to take this alpha. I'm going to import from Patreon Minis. Oh. Open. And I'm gonna actually gonna change that to uh, standard and go back to that one. We're gonna come back up here, turn on lazy mouse, turn the lazy radius up a bit, bit and lazy step to 1.5. Now, no, we don't want it's on subtract. We want to add. We want to shrink it and we want to shrink the mouse. And we want to change lazy steps to 2.5. Let's draw the focal shift to zero. No. Increase the intensity and increase the size just a bit. No. Drop those lazy steps to 1.75 and zoom out just a little so I can get there. Okay, so we're gonna... No. Lazy steps to Now this is a detail that might not show well. S yeah, that's not going to show well. So we're going to make it a little bit larger, a little bit stronger. And now we're going to come up and down. There. That looked good. We want it to look as primitive and crude as we can without being too, you know, ugh me thug. So we're gonna bring it down here. We also want it to be actually visible on the print. So that's why we did it so large. Now we frame out. Okay. Now. We're going to do... <coughs> we're going to hide the hands. At least this hand. and we're going to focus in on this. Let's turn off the alpha. We're going to shrink that intensity down a lot, turn off the lazy mouse. Make the draw size increase just a bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to do our basic hang shapes. Oh. 
I forgot to change the focal shift to zero. Too big. Okay, and that's basically what we want. We need to go ahead and smooth out some areas of this. Let's smooth out from here. Okay, now we're going to get our slash brush. Once again, we're going to add 8. We're going to draw on the underside of these wrinkles. Once again, for gravity's sake. Come down here, come up there, then we're going to come down like that, come down here. And come down this way, come down this way. Then we're going to rely on the wrinkles from this brush to make the wrinkles over the foot. Now we're going to go to subtract and we're going to subtract underneath these wrinkles. And that's the front wrinkles for the for the robe. Now we need to do the back ones. And then the only things left would be the hands, the spear, and yeah. So let's go back to standard. We're gonna kind of draw across a little bit more and then down and then off center down and down Alright, and now we go back to our slash tool. And once again, we're going to 
sharpen these wrinkles on the bottom portion or so. And let's get this going. It's already 8.03, so this is already taking longer than the normal one, but that's okay because this was literally done as a challenge. Oh. You want to kind of try and make these wrinkles, the really long hanging ones, kind of swoopy as much as you can. And you want to keep up with where on the wrinkle you are. And now we go to Z subtract. We're going to cut under here, cut under here. Okay, and it's and there. And that's our wrinkles for the uh, lower body. Let's make everything visible just so we can make things easier here. And we can see what else we need to do, really, besides the hands. We're not going to make the... Uh, okay, now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going over here. Images. And it's going to be deer skull. And I'm going to look to see where the cracks are. That's a bad picture. No. I need it larger than that. So, tools size large. This is where I get a lot of my uh, reference images. There we go. No, that's not where we go. View image. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw in the cracks onto the skull. So, that's the skull. And we're going to the orb crack brush. Make it smaller. And we're going to start off looking at this picture. Yeah, it's going all the way back down the center of the head. And then and then comes across from this side and from that side. Oh, no it doesn't. Key tip, never uh, make sure to take your hand off the uh, uh, stylus when you sneeze. And then I'm going to draw a line here and one here. And then one down this way. Just to represent, you know, it's been broken a couple times. Now, let me inflate. No, no not inflate, but enlarge. And I'm going to smooth out the underside of these antlers because they kind of. These striations are from the move tool. The move tool is imperfect. It works, but you got to be careful about the geometry that it what it does to the geometry sometimes. 
and back over here and back here now the other thing we're doing is go ahead and hide the I'm going to use not the clay build up but just the clay tool and this is the no it's gonna kind of build up just a little bit along the path of the antlers and down the I come up to here and kind of come down a little kind of emphasize again this is something that may not be fully visible when you actually print but it's going to be one of those it's going to emphasize the shape a bit more and enough to possibly be visible it might be visible on an on a uh, resin print but i don't think it'll be visible on a uh fdm print it also gives us a bit of chaos and noise to the uh, surface, which makes it more organic, less shaped. Especially since, yeah, there we go. That's looking pretty good. I think all we really need to do is, like I said, the spear and the hands. Let's start off with the spear. Geometry, we're going to subdivide it a little bit. And then we're going to dynamax it at 256. Now this is going to be a slight alteration of the existing spear in that we're going to make it appear to be instead of a socket spear. Well, a, a socket spear, yes, but one piece instead of the socket being separate. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to subdivide it again. And I'm going to use the move tool of all things just to give us a bit of erratic shaping. Then I'm going to shrink the mouse to about there and I'll grab the corner of the spear. Actually, let's bring the focal shift to about there. And then grab here and kind of pull out. Alright, so the only thing left to do is, is draw a couple bits of uh, weird uh, logograms onto this blade. And now all that means is just random 
curls and shapes that represent something to him. <laughs> and then, like, this obviously will represent a snake. We're going to put a similar snake over here. Although obviously not identical. But different logograms. Alright, so fire is caused by lightning which comes from the clouds which also spits rain and feeds the trees which house the squirrels yes that's a logogram for squirrel and nuts yeah there we go that's our druid now to fix the hands and that'll be it for him actually I think let's go back to the helmet I think we can bring it down and uh, let's let's take him and let's move his ears in a bit and we're going to bring the helmet down so select the helmet and deformation we're gonna bring it down off of Z or off of Y rather now for those of you who are very familiar with 3D printing in most 3D graphics work Y is actually up and down and Z is forward and back frame yeah <coughs> now let's go ahead and subtool this guy so I can work on his hands now what we do is we go first to inflate because almost all everything we're gonna do in the hands is inflate and we shrink the mouse to be about the same size as the fingers And then we go ahead and mark off, oh, way too strong. Yeah, we need it to be around like 10. Yeah, mark off that knuckle, that knuckle, and that knuckle, and that knuckle. And then here, it's going to be that knuckle, that knuckle, that knuckle, and that knuckle. Actually, oh, this last two are not accurate. And there we go. And then, that knuckle, that knuckle, and that knuckle, and that knuckle. There, 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 and there, and smooth out the backs, smooth out the backs of each finger. and smooth over these knuckles just a little bit because they are a bit more yeah whoop forgot I was too close to the top edge of the screen 
It didn't like that. Okay. Now we're going to add a little bit of this to there and there and there and there and then smooth out the knuckles because he doesn't need full on orc knuckles. Now, the staff hand, or the spear hand if you want. One thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and zoom in a bit because we need to inflate this thumb and here's where we encounter one of the problems of zebrice that gets annoying and that's now that I have moved this I have done some met some uh, strokes here it now it'll allow me to move around so around this hand knuckle 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 and drag down drag down drag down and drag down and then smooth out the bottom of the hand. Maybe blend it just a little bit up here and smooth these out a bit. Now, we need to put knuckles here and here on the on this finger. And then just bring them forward, back, back, forward, back, back and then smooth the fingers. What this does, this straightens out the fingers and like, makes them look less like Vienna sausages folded around the staff or spear or whatever this is and more like, you know, phalanges with bones inside. Okay, and now we're going to go up here to slash. With an intensity of negative 11, we are going to make sure to slash. Oh. No. 15. And we're going to slash the space between the fingers. So this way the fingers are distinguished from each other. And I don't know about you, but I like to think I have very distinguished fingers and artist hands. Somebody told me that yesterday. Yeah. Now this side, yeah, I still need to do them. I don't need to do all of them because I didn't do a lot of smoothing on parts of it, but yeah. Just need to make the fingers distinct. Okay, now let's frame out, and this is what we have managed to create. Let's go ahead. Ow, I'm sore. And merge everything. Let's make the uh, base visible too, because, yeah, what do you know? I actually have the base in place. And this means I can merge down as we go. It's 4.5 million polygons right now, just to warn you. Or somewhere about there. It's 4.5 million points. Four point five four one million polygons. And this is our shaman. I think he came out well, don't you? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going back to geometry and we're going to dynamesh him.
If he doesn't look good after this, I'll go back in and change the resolution from 768 to 1024. And we have 1.751 million polygons. You zoom in, and we can... Yeah, it's a third of the polygon count, and it still looks nice. Because a lot of those polygons were covering each other up. Okay. So now we're going up to Z plugin. We're going to Z plugin. Let's say. And Decimation Master. And we're going to go with 50k points, which would be 100,000 polygons for the finished print. I click on Custom. Analyzing Mesh, and it's going to give me that little orange bar way up there, going across that way. Telling us how many percent it's at 12. It's actually going pretty quickly. And it goes from 1.751 million polygons. 1,750,000 polygons. To... Drum roll, please. <laughs> Bang. 100,261 polygons. And it looks almost the same. So, what we do now, we've got our, our, our base on it, we've got it all set up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to export this as Spooky Shaman Figure. That is our Spooky Shaman Figure. And that'll be on the, in the file vault next week. So, yeah, eight, uh, two and a half hours to finish that sculpt. That was a, that was a pretty heavy sculpt there, guys. Well, again, again, part, a lot of that was how much time I spent on that horned helmet. <laughs> now, that was that, that was pretty pretty long horn. Yeah. So what I'm actually kind of proud of is how the how the smoke came out. I'd love to see how that looks when I print it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna head and closing ZBrush and all my other sculpting programs because I don't need them anymore for today. And, uh, That includes that does not include Dad Studio because I'm going to be rendering the basic image of the guy in that, but it does include all my various prom, uh, reference pictures. So, is there anybody new in there that I missed? Besides, you know, I see Andrew, I saw Kim, I saw Todd. Uh, did anybody else show up that decided to just be quiet and has been watching this whole time? Wants to say something about the uh, the spooky shaman? Because hmm? I see five people are watching. But there's me and three people in chat. So who's number five? Hmm. Well, there's only one lurker. Which is odd, because I know three people named Lurker. Chris Lurker. His ex-wife, Wendy Lurker, who's no longer named Wendy Lurker because she got married to somebody else. Blah, blah, blah. And, his, and their daughter, Megan Lurker. Well, there's also an author from Germany called Manfred von Lurker. Really creepy name. Really, really quiet guy who just studies mythology. Ah, it's Narthor. That's who's it. Well, 
like I said, it is 8.28. I have been online today for four and a half hours, getting close to almost five in some ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say good night to everyone. I'm going to do my usual countdown over here. Now, the reason I have my hand over here is because I have X split, you know, in this part of my screen, YouTube filling it, and I can see, basically, I can see about to here. So I put my hand over here so I can see it right there on my screen. And I'm going to count down from five, a four, a three, a two, and a one. That'll lag tonight. Yeah, I'm not even counting down yet. Wow. Okay, there I go. Three, two, good night. <laughs>